Right, this is going to be a series of videos to introduce some of the sampling functionality in Max. We've had a look at uh, synthesis over the past few tutorials, mm. so it's now the turn of some relevant sampling objects. So I'll open up this first uh, patch in the exercises I've set, um, <clears throat> and this is just to point out uh, the main way of playing samples straight from the hard drive is this SF Play object. It's a simple object but it's fairly versatile and it grabs data from the hard drive and plays it back. Um, here I've got a two-channel version denoted by the uh, argument of two. Uh, I've got an open message here uh, that allows me to open up a dialog, choose a sound, Uh, and then this is with many objects, um, SF Play recognizes the toggle box as an on-off message. So it receives ones to turn the sound on and a zero to turn it off. So I'll turn on the audio and play that back. So it's as simple as that. Slightly more functionality for SF Play is over here, or at least some ways in which to use it a little more comfortably. So first of all, uh, you've got this drag and drop func file loading uh, functionality here, um, and that simply allows you to drag a file in and drop it. Uh, this runs through this open message which has a dollar one symbol after it. We've, in we've encountered the dollar one symbol before, which is basically uh, any, anything that is sent through the message box um, will replace $1. So in this case, if I unlock the patch, um, I can show you what it's throughputting. When I drag the drum loop sound onto drag and drop file loading, then uh, out of the left-hand outlet, it sends the entire file path for that uh, file. So we've got it in my... Um, on my computer, it's going from systems, users, my name, blah, 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 blah. And eventually we get to the file name, which is right at the end of that string. So open is succeeded by that entire file path. And SF Play knows to open it. So that's a handy way of uh, simply dragging a file and, and having it load into SF Play. SF Play can also work in conjunction with this object, which is called a play bar. This can work in replacement of the toggle object uh, and SF Play knows that um, it will go back and actually you get a an indication of uh, position within the playback file and also you can move it around. You have a, a loop mode here which you can switch on to. So the play bar can be quite handy just to, to see what's being played back. Um, finally, down here we've got uh, speed input. So the right-hand inlet of SF Play accommodates this uh, number, which can be used to change the speed of playback. So a value of one means that we hear it back at normal speed. Um, if I change, actually, I'll turn this up a little bit again. A value of two makes it play back at twice the speed, and 0 0.5 makes it play back at half speed. And so on, so we can, um, you know, obviously we can fiddle around with that and it uh, changes the speed dynamically. So that's a couple of extra bits and pieces uh, in relation to the SF Play tool. Okay. Um, so I've given you a little exercise to do, um, although this one I'm not going to spend much time showing you. Uh, it says connect up these objects to produce a patch which will allow you to audition a sound file i.e. playback immediately when you drop a sound file into the Dropbox. Well, we can set up most of it exactly as we've seen it in the other um, examples. So we have uh, a, a stereo input and output to there. Uh, there's SF Play. Obviously, we need an argument of two to give it two um, channels. Connect those like that. Um, and then we will have uh, our... Dropbox connected to open and then connected to the input of SF Play. 
to open the file. You'll notice that I haven't given you a toggle, um, and that's because we don't. I haven't asked you to stop the file, although ultimately you'd probably want to. What I've asked is that it will simply allow you to audition a sound file as soon as you drop a sound file into the Dropbox. So when I drop a sound into here, I want to be able to hear it. Most operating systems now have a means of kind of auditioning sounds within the Finder view or within the file management view, um, but you didn't used to be able to do that. So you'd need, so, you know, something like this would have been quite handy uh, for just checking to see what a, a sound file sounded like. So if I dro drop a drum loop into here, then I want it to play back immediately. Um, and, and all I need to do to do that is to do this. So what we have is when I drop a sound file into the Dropbox, the file path comes out of here, it replaces the $1 symbol, so we get open and then the file path going into SF Play. Um, immediately after that, we the message, remember, it goes right to left, so after it's opened, the message is then sent down to here, and one tells SF Play to play. So now, as soon as I drop the file in, it plays. And that would happen with any sound. So I suppose that's just to show you that you can uh, orchestrate a sequence of events to happen uh, by means of a single keystroke.